Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Hashmi, and I'm wearing two hats today. I am presenting on behalf of BRAC, the BRAC model, but I also am at CGAP with the Global Graduation Program. And I will take a few minutes after the BRAC uh, uh, program to talk a little bit about the global lessons from graduation that we have been uh, getting. So first of all, BRAC, huge big NGO, the largest NGO possibly, works in 11 countries outside of Bangladesh and works on a range of different areas from environment, climate change to microfinance, education, uh, legal aid. It's, it's a multi-sector NGO and it covers pretty much every facet of poor people's vulnerabilities. Now, BRAC, who started early 70s, had a really great microfinance program, but it started recognizing that contrary to what people were pushing at that time, microfinance really wasn't of much use to the poorest because they were being systematically left out. So that's when BRAC recognized that there was a need for something very specific to those living in extreme poverty. And that's why they started thinking about some methodology, some model that would not only reach the poorest, but ensure that they ended up in leading sustainable livelihoods. So since then, since 2002, BRAC started their targeting the ultra poor program, which now covers 1.7 million households. Now the model is simple. It's based on a recognition that poor people face a range of different vulnerabilities. And so the response they figured had to also be multidimensional. So they combined cash assistance for consumption, which we all do through our conditional and unconditional transfers. But with that, they added in a livelihoods component, recognizing that it was important for people while they were in this cash assistance to start thinking of a business plan, thinking of self-employment as a strategy. But then most of these micro businesses need seed capital to start with. And they're too poor to be able to go out and get a credit for this because the credit would get them even more indebted and even more vulnerable. So it was a seed capital transfer, an asset transfer. So the consumption support, the asset transfer, savings to bring in a notion of financial discipline in their lives. Also, providing health care and very importantly, hands-on coaching because we've seen so many programs around the world, governments, especially prior to elections, handing out cattle, handing out land, handing out different assets to the poor. But almost always what ends up happening is to lose all that. And so the hands-on coaching really is it's weekly meetings, creating a business plan for them so that they are able to manage it, but also going back providing them with confidence, saying, you know, you can do it. Because a big part of being so vulnerable is not having the confidence in yourself. So that's what happens through this hands-on coaching. And the end result is, over a time-bound two to three-year period, in Bragg's case, it's two years, they reach a certain level of sustainable livelihoods that gets them beyond the threshold of extreme poverty. So once again, the theory of change for Bragg is Identify the poorest and the most vulnerable, provide injections of capital, productive asset, ensure some level of time-bound consumption support, offer holistic services, and providing regular encouragement, then they end up going beyond that, graduating, so to say. So very clearly, therefore, so graduation is time-bound, it's multidimensional. Now, too often, governments around the world 
have seized upon this as a great way of pushing people out of social protection. So graduation is seen as a way of getting people not to be receiving government support in other areas of social protection. So very clearly, graduation does not constitute an exit for social, from social protection. I want to get back to that uh, a little later. But it is something that provides us with a pathway for some of the poorest. And I'll get back to that again. Provides a pathway when it is anchored into a broader social protection context that also provides health support, that provides cash transfer support, pensions, child grants, and also when they fall deeply down. Um, of course, when doing this, BRAC and other graduation programs set up certain criteria on what is involved in making sure that uh, people do graduate. So there are certain graduation indicators, graduation criteria. It varies by countries. It's different in Paraguay. It's different in Ethiopia. We can talk about that more during the small group sessions. Now, what, the, what BRAC has done, and in fact, the global replication of graduation has done, is conducted extremely rigorous impact assessments, randomized controlled trials. And what those randomized trials, in the case of BRAC, prove that even, over, even after a seven-year period, annual incomes still continue increasing, productive work increases, consumption expenditure increases, savings increases, access to land goes up. And also in the case of child malnutrition, because we recognize now that just providing food security may be necessary, but not sufficient because people still suffer from, and especially children suffer from malnutrition. And here we recognize that the graduation approach can also provide positive impacts on child malnutrition. Now, <clears throat> once again, laying this all out, uh, and I need to say this, that um, at CGAP, when we recognized that the graduation program at BRAC, that their ultra-poor program was so uh, successful, we worked around the world replicating this, testing it. And during this process, we realized, once again, as I said earlier, the importance of this being situated within social protection. So labor policies, safe working places, job security, social sector policies, uh, infrastructure for education, health, all those are vitally important. And even other aspects of social of safety nets are important. And within that, that's where we're situating the graduation program. So we build it on top of pre-existing cash transfer programs. So here it's important to recognize that we're not advocating going into each and every different country, starting from scratch, and saying, look, here's this graduation magic bullet implemented. We're saying we work within the canvas in those countries to recognize what the government is doing and building on top of, the, of what the government already has. And this is what uh, Fundación Capital is doing in uh, Colombia and uh, in Mexico and a few other countries. Now, we too conducted rigorous randomized control trials in six, seven different uh, uh, pilots, and we recognized that um, income, savings, food security, health, and even the subjective notion of happiness, all those resulted in, uh, I mean, all those were extremely positive. And we also looked at the cost-benefit analysis. And so in Ethiopia, uh, the returns on investment was 260%. In Bangladesh, BRAC, 540%. In India, in um, West Bengal, the rate of, uh, the, the return on investment was 433%. So it is a little costly, but the benefits are extremely important. And that's how we have to sell it to the finance ministers. So the overall achievements of the graduation program, income generation, diversification, food security, safe 
place to save, breaking the cycle of indebtedness, and creating empowerment of women and the poor. Now, having said that, there is always the danger of slipping back. So we have to be able to make sure that that doesn't happen. And for that, the social protection and government services have to be there. For financial services providers are required, healthcare insurance, community groups, and the involvement of private sector businesses to create jobs, because jobs is going to be the new frontier. It can't be just self-employment, it has to be jobs. Just to show a little bit, very briefly, on the global expansion of graduation programs. Started with BRAC, then we at CGAP tested it out in 10 sites in eight countries. Then NGOs started implementing it into, in a range of countries, and donors, especially UNHCR, came in. They started adapting the model in a lot of refugee contexts, and then governments. There are 20 governments implementing the graduation program as part of the social protection uh, 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 framework. So critical factors looking ahead, lower costs, how do you reduce intensity of home visits, because that's costly, how do you add other vulnerable segments aside from those in extreme poverty, and ensure convergence, and in the Philippines, DSWD is doing exactly that, creating convergence of existing government programs. Now, realize that the success of graduation depends on context. Without the markets, without the systems of healthcare and education, without adequate infrastructure, without being prepared against natural shocks and resources and macroeconomic shocks, it's not going to be successful. So bottom line, it's a great approach, the graduation approach, very successful approach, has to be integrated really careful with government programs, specifically within a social protection context, and ensuring linkages to employment and market. And, uh, well, we're still doing a lot of learning, but let me end with one last slide and say that our community of practice, the graduation of community of practice has more than 500 members. We were all housed within CGAP. Now we're moving to the World Bank, the World Bank Social Protection and Jobs Global Practice. And the launch will be early fall, and it's going to be including policymakers, some NGOs, some international donors, bilateral and multilateral, and we will have a secretariat then within the jobs group. And I we keep on repeating jobs is because that is going to be the nut that we crack. And it's not just increasing the number of jobs, it is increasing the productivity of jobs, because the self-employment we've been able to do so far, that really is, doesn't add up to a huge big productivity increases. The long-term vision, is ensuring people in extreme poverty keep moving up and become part of the emerging middle class. And with that vision, graduation really is, even though I've been championing it for 12, 15 years, that is going to be one piece of the puzzle. There's a much bigger canvas that we need to address. Thank you. <laughs>